21-year-old student Hiba Hazim was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 2018. Now, she has bravely documented what her journey is like. She's put it on YouTube, opening up about it all to her 23,000 subscribers. Bipolar disorder is categorized by extreme mood changes, ranging from manic highs to depressive lows. It's feeling in high saturation, everything a little too much. It's feeling on top of the world, you are magic, you can do anything, you can be anyone. It's your mind running, you're dancing, you're talking, happier than happy, euphoric, and then you crash. Depressed, it's being detached, no longer caring. It's a sadness so deep it physically hurts. It's a lifetime of chaos and it's exhausting. It's knowing that although my life may be a little crazy, It'll be the only one I'll live, so I have to make it count. And making it count is a part of her journey. And Heba joins us now from her home in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Heba, thank you so much for joining us. Listen, I know that watching what your messages and watching, even now, I have goosebumps because you're being so real and so vulnerable. How are you today? Because I know each day is different, each moment is different. How are you today? Um, luckily, I've been pretty good for this entire year, honestly. Um, I've, I go to therapy twice a week, and I work really hard to stay stable, and luckily, I have been pretty good for a long time now. Um, Hiba, I know you're on medication that helps you stay stable. How is stable defined, especially with the assistance of the medicine you take? Um, stable is basically, I can feel emotion, you know, I can feel sadness and I can feel happiness, but it's no longer those crazy extremes where it's taking over my entire life and lasting for weeks to months at a time. You know, I can have a bad day. I can have a couple of bad days, but then they end, you know, just like anybody else's. Do you feel it coming on? Do you feel if it is going to be a bad day or if it's not, do you, do you feel that coming on? Um, I feel it when I, there's a mood episode coming on, like a like a full blown mood episode, because all of my habits change. For example, if I'm becoming manic, I start to sleep less, and I start to eat less, and I start to talk faster, and I start to have these um, delusions of like like these grandiose thinking. And then if I'm getting depressed, I suddenly become this very negative, like cynical person, and I'm sleeping so much, and I want to sleep all the time, and. These kind of things kind of tell me that something is wrong. And I could hear even in your description in the YouTube videos where you are taking us through the day to day, to your point, the rapid, you know, speak and just kind of this, this, is it, is it living an unstable life? Is that a fair way to describe it? Because I, I'm trying to understand, especially from the, the severe mood swings of it all. Yeah, definitely when you're unmedicated, I would say it's a very unstable life. You know, no part of your life is stable. You know, from your relationships mm. to school to work, nothing is stable. You know, you mentioned the lowest point you had um, led you to a psychiatric hospital. I don't want to talk about mm -hmm. other people's conditions because, you know, that's not fair to them. But in the public light, we've seen, we referenced Kanye West, and he was open about even his... Uh, stay at a, at a facility there. What led you to have to be treated at a psychiatric hospital? Well, I've been treated at a psychiatric hospital twice. My mm -hmm. first time, which was definitely the lowest moment for me, was after I'd been battling the worst depression that I've ever battled, even until now. Mm. And I wasn't get on medication. I wasn't like, I didn't have any treatment whatsoever, but I was extremely, extremely suicidal. I just didn't know how to make it stop. So I started oh. seeing a doctor and they told me that I had bipolar disorder and I just, I didn't know what to do. It felt like my world was ending. So about two days after I got diagnosed, I checked myself into the hospital I just, I just didn't know what else to do. And I know someone who is very proud of you and how you've shared your story. And she sent us a little video. Take a look. Hey, Eva, my beautiful girl. You are so strong. You are so brave. You are so kind inside and out. We love you. We love you so much. We proud of you, especially this time when you have so hard time for you. But you take care of yourself. You take care of your study. I am lucky because I have a daughter like you. That 
touch your mom. As you oh know, she's God. so proud of you and so <laughs> proud of how you're speaking up for others. How does that feel mm -hmm. to hear her support you in this way? And, and what do you hope for others who are on this journey and their families? Um, it feels really, really nice because, you know, when I first started speaking about my illness, people told my mom, you know, especially because I'm Pakistani and we have a different kind of culture, people told my mom, you know, don't let her speak about this stuff. She's never going to get married. You know, it's mm. embarrassing. She should hide this stuff. But my mom was just like, no, like if she wants to speak out and help people, she can do whatever she wants. And, you know, I think it's really, really important to have family support. So I feel very lucky because I know not everybody else has it. Yeah. And I just know that, you know, if you're dealing with bipolar or any mental illness and, you know, it's okay to lean on your family a little bit and it's okay to, you know, let them in and help, like, let them help you. Well, you are helping so many by sharing your journey and we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Hiba. Thank you.